The big day in women's cricket, the inaugural WPL auction is done and dusted with. And now we have five squads. All of them look uh, amazingly well because they are stacked with some great talents, uh, domestic, capped and uncapped overseas as well. And on this episode of What's Up with Women's Cricket, Shweta Haranhali and myself, Anisha Ghosh, we are going to take a look at how these teams stack up and what their strengths and weaknesses might be like and who made the best bits. First up, Shweta, who do you think uh, got the best bids done on Monday at the Geo World Convention Center? The first set to me, obviously, and to everyone else following uh, the auction proceedings would agree that looked the most alluring in terms of the players present on it. And uh, unsurprisingly, the biggest buys of the day came from that set with Smriti Mandana becoming the most expensive player uh, from the WPL auction at INR 3.4 crore with Ashley Gardner and Nat Siva, who came from the later sets, uh, going for INR 2 crores. Your thoughts on Smriti Madhana and the and the uh, bit sort of uh, that came from uh, Mumbai Indians with RCB, the Royal Challengers Bangalore, eventually snapping up uh, the India Vice Captain? Well, I mean, what an exhilarating seven hours of auction we've just witnessed, you know. And for someone who's actually followed women's cricket to the absolute T, it was really heartening to see the efforts and the growth and development in women's sport. Uh, Smriti Mandana and Harman Preet Kaur, these two names were always going to be the biggest pies in this edition of the uh, Women's Premier League. And no surprises there, RCB did break the bank if i can say break the bank for the india vice captain and uh, i was really really happy not only for smriti but also for the couple of buys that rcb did make in terms of elise perry i felt sophie divine for them was an absolute steal for 50 lakhs uh, i am pretty sure not many people would expect that and uh, they're always known to have a star studded lineup and after the first set of the marquee after the first set of marquee players i think my loyalties are slowly shifted to RCB. <laughs> right. And I'm glad that you spoke about uh, Ellis Perry because I was at the Port Elizabeth ground uh, or Keberha as they call the city. Um, I was at St. George's, George's Park when Australia's training session was actually taking place. Ashley Gardner had gone for that bonkers amount of mm -hmm. money with Ashley Gardner watching it live on a phone alongside Kim Garth and Megan Shute. And all of them just kept following the vicissitudes of the of the bidding process because it was quite a closely contested bid as far as far as Ashley Gardner's is concerned. In the meantime, Ellis Perry, the professional, uh, the legend that she is, kept on toiling it hard, uh, toiling out at uh, at the nets uh, at St George's Park. And when she went under the hammer, she was still <laughs> out uh, in the nets uh, <laughs> trying to perfect her craft quite uh, uh, unaware of the fact that uh, there was a bit of a bidding war uh, emerging from the Geo uh, World Convention Center there as well. In terms of how RCB went all guns blazing and uh, snapped up Smithy, I think I, I had said in one of the earlier um, episodes of our show that Mumbai, in my view, <laughs> could have been that team. Yes. So for them to have backed out relatively early, um, it probably speaks to the fact that the auction purse, after all, is just a meager yeah. INR 12 crore. So you cannot really afford to break the bank. If you do that, you are decisively hurting uh, the makeup of your squad, which is why Mumbai Indians went for the next person who came up at the auction, which was India captain Harman Preet Kaur. Not too high a price uh, she got because she wasn't uh, in the 2 crore or above bracket, yeah. under 2 crores. What did you make of uh, the amount of money that was shelled out for Harman Preet? And going by the fact that she's likely to lead uh, Mumbai yeah. Indians, uh, how do you think, uh, was she given a fair sort of a sum? Uh, if I can say, I think she's a bit underpaid at the moment with the skill set that she offers. Uh, pretty sure that she is going to be one of the people who will lead Mumbai along with Smriti for RCB. Uh, but Harman at 1.8 CR is something that Mumbai, I think, got really, really lucky because I expected her personally to go somewhere around 2.6, 2.7 crores. But 
with only a 12 lakh a uh, 12 crore purse that all the teams have it's not only hurt the international players but uh, it's also hurt a lot of domestic players because you know a lot not many teams were actually willing to shell out a lot of money and that is something i think the bcci and the governing council could probably take into consideration if we probably have this auctions further but for Mumbai to actually have Harman Preet uh, is, I think, one of the best things. They want to build a squad around her. And uh, they did actually get a lot of core players in terms of Nat Siver, Emilia Kerr. So the core of the Mumbai team looks really, really solid. And they would be really happy to have the India captain in their ranks. And if we move a bit more further towards the West, the Gujarat Giants, with Rachel Haynes, the former Australia captain, vice captain, as the head coach, seems to have recruited a number of uh, very good, high-quality Australian players, with Ashley Gardner being the foremost of them. Uh, what does Ashley Gardner bring to the table? Mm. Shelly Kinchki is somebody who uh, fielded uh, questions at the presser after training, uh, and by yesterday, I mean Monday. And the question I posed her was, what is it that makes mm. Ashley Gardner so special? So the straightforward answer was that she she's a three-dimensional player, yeah. after all. If she fails in one department, which is what happened in Australia's tournament opening game at the T20 World Cup in Pal a few days ago, where she got out for maybe a duck or three runs, but out she came with the ball and took her career best figures of 5 for 12, uh, of, of just uh, not even from a full allocation of overs, maybe three overs. So that speaks volumes about uh, a player who can put her hand up in either discipline and can be that match winner her captain is looking for. And which explains why the team's three teams, including UP Warriors, Warriors with a Z at the end, <laughs> um, uh, Gujarat Giants and Mumbai Indians themselves, yeah. started bidding for uh, Ashley Gardner with Gujarat Giants obviously making their uh, intentions very clear. And Rachel Haynes's imprint is obviously out there for everyone yes. to see in that decisioning but who are the other players you reckon our viewers could look forward uh, to watching as far as the Gujarat Giants are concerned because they do have a reasonably good uh, domestic roster. I think with Rachel Haynes as their uh, head coach for this season it was very clear that there would be a lot of Australian players in the ranks and uh, uh, along with her, obviously, you have Nushin al -Kadir. So, there would be a mix of experience and a lot of under-19 talent coming into the side. Uh, no surprises there that they went all out for Ashley Gardner because you need an all-rounder of her caliber to actually balance to this side. Uh, along with her, you have Beth Mooney, you have Annabelle Sutherland. There's a lot of Australian presence in this. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of Australian presence, to be honest, in the team for them. And... Uh, uh, Deandra Dotton, I mean, she's not part of the international setup. She's not playing for West Indies after retiring from international cricket. But she is one of the hardest hitting batters in world cricket. And for them to have Ash Gardner, Deandra Dotton, Beth Mooney, Annabelle Sutherland in their ranks, I think the playing 11 or the core group of players look solid. And plus to add on to, you obviously have Harleen Deol and S. Meghna in the ranks. So there is a lot of experience as far as Australian team is concerned and there is also a lot of Indian players who are there who've made it to the national side so they will definitely be one of the teams to watch out for. But who becomes their captain? That is the million dollar question, right? <laughs> Both Noshin al Khadir and Mithali Raj try keeping things uh, to the best of their ability under the wrap during the auction interviews. Uh, does Ashley Gardler look like the front runner to take over the cap captaincy reins for the inaugural edition? Maybe yes, uh, but do you I, prob to I probably would be tilted a bit towards Neharana, uh, mainly because, you know, uh, she's obviously led railways for a very long time when Mithali Raj or, you know, all the other senior players were not available or away for national duty. So she's one of the players that I could potentially see as a captaincy material. Uh, and she knows Nushin also very well because they've been together for railways. So 
and according to me i think she has one of the sharpest brains in the country as far as leading a side is concerned so i wouldn't be surprised if they go and ideally they should go for an indian captain because she is the one who will probably know all the domestic players because you have someone like ahli gala monica patel tanuja kanwar in their ranks and i'm not very sure how much an overseas captain would be aware of that fact of the strengths they bring to the uh, table so i would probably feel an indian captain in term in Terms of Sneha Rana should be an ideal ca- captaincy candidate for them. Uh, but going by the logic that you stated, which I am completely in agreement with, that most teams, if not all, should have Indian captains. Okay, let me rephrase that. All mm-hmm. teams should have Indian captains because the idea behind this tournament, or at least a part of it, is to help the next generations of Indian domestic. talent grow and find their feet in international cricket and for that to happen the the seamless assimilation and exchange of ideas between the overseas stars whether it be the players the coaching personnel and the indian uh, players and the coaching staff as well is going to be critical in, in that context keeping that in mind i think having a, a leader who knows your domestic talent well becomes uh, you know immensely important but can we apply that uh, rationale to the delhi capitals who have roped in by far the most successful captain of this generation uh, across men's and women's teams by the way not just yeah. in cricket and that is the inimitable meg lani mm-hmm. who again went for a conservative sum uh, yeah. largely because again meg lani is not an all rounder and as we have deduced from the auction trends and as has been the case in the men's IPL as well that all rounders sell meg lanning did sell mm-hmm. but not so much uh, at a high rate as the ashley gardeners and the nat silvers here is an opportunity for delhi to probably say look here we are here to win just as india did with yeah. their squad selection at the under 19 women's t20 world cup last month at this very country in south africa I think Delhi could pick uh, a route where they say we are here to give the best exposure to our young talent, and that includes Jimmy Marodrix, who's coming off a spectacular half century, mm-hmm. one of the most knocks in a career, one of the most important knocks in a career, mm-hmm. and also one of the most uh, critical knocks for India in their uh, in their history because it was against Pakistan. It was. a tournament opener for them at this world cup and the following morning she went for mm-hmm. over 2 crores uh, at mm-hmm. the at the auction at the uh, geo world convention center and the other youngster that uh, delhi capitals have in their ranks is a world cup winning captain india's mm-hmm. first female world cup winning captain shefali verma what does meg lanning do with these uh, rookies <laughs> well, let, let me not call them rookies but these youngsters and all of them even meg lanning was a prodigy herself and she started out you know she was she was breaking records for fun and uh, that applies to how jimima rodrix and shefali verma's careers have also panned out so what is this holy trinity that has caught mm-hmm. everyone's attention at least on social media it has definitely caught my attention by the way mm-hmm. I think uh, Delhi were initially a bit circumspect when it, when the first set of the marquee players were out, but uh, when the second set was out, they probably assembled three of the most destructive batters, if I can say. They are probably it's high quality with Meg Lanning, Jamima Rodrik, Shefali Verma, and to add to this batting talent, you have Marzan Cap, Alice Capsi, and Jess Johnson. So this. looks like a formidable batting unit to say the least i wouldn't be surprised you know as much as i say that we want an uh, indian domestic player or an indian player to lead the side but delhi would obviously take meg lanning into consideration considering her record uh, for the australian side and how she has actually built a team for them that is that is dominating world cricket for the past 4 5 years a little surprised that gujarat actually didn't go for lanning because uh, I personally thought with Rachel Haynes as the head coach, and you know she's been part, she's been the vice captain to Meg Lanning for a number of years. They share a very good uh, understanding of how to actually strategize and lead a team. So I was really surprised with Gujarat not going for Lanning, but 
Delhi, I think, would be tilted towards Lanning. I know we have Jamima. I know they have Shefali, the World Cup winning captain. But uh, they would want to go for experience, especially in their first season. And that is how the squad makeup has been for them in terms of having a Radha Yadav, Shikha Pandey in the squad. So they have banged on experience. And for the first season, I probably feel they'll go for experience and have Shif- have J- Jamima and Shefali in the ranks, uh, just getting used to the whole uh, WPL and then gradually having them in, say, a leadership role in the coming years. But I am also not very uh, comfortable with the idea that when you had uh, the last couple or or the last few, uh, uh, you know, 40, 50 uh, lakh, uh, lakhs left in your account, could those sums of money have been invested in domestic talent or non-Australia talent? Uh, is that something that the franchises could have potentially looked into? Because we know there are some high profile names from other countries who were not picked. Yeah. And that includes Chamari Athapathu. What did Chamari Athapathu need to do to be a big to change her nationality? Uh, it, it sort of appears to me a bit tricky. Uh, your thoughts on the snub, uh, by far the biggest snub um, because Chimani I mean, Atapatu is an all-rounder and we were talking all-rounders and the 3D skills that they bring to the table, right? And Chimani Atapatu just the other night defeated yeah, she did it. Defeat mm. South Africa mm. and a T20 World Cup opener in their mm. backyard by mm. scoring a much important 50. And the conditions are going to be quite similar uh, in Mumbai, yeah. right? So what really kept the, uh, the franchises to not bid her for not bid for her, not just once, but twice. But twice. She went yeah. on, troll on both occasions. I mean, quite surprising in a week when you actually help Sri Lanka win a game with both bat and ball and you don't find any takers in the Women's Premier League. It was one of the most shocking uh, uh, snubs, I would pro- probably say, because she is one of the hardest hitting batters in world cricket and she has the ability to clear boundaries with absolute ease along with her offspin. So, as much as we talk about all-rounders uh, going for a lot of money, she was one of the players I thought the franchises would definitely want to opt for. Uh, another thing, I think the 12 crore purse is something that a lot of franchises would probably be thinking about on how to go about. So that is one thing that probably did not allow them to spend a lot. But saying that uh, when she came into the second accelerated auction, I felt that one of the teams could have definitely gone for her. And I probably thought Mumbai would be one of the teams to actually go for her because they kind of lack that firepower at the top. With mm-hmm. They don't have, like they have Nat Silver, they have Harman Preet. But who's going to open the batting? You have, they then picked Haley Matthew, who is kind of a like-for-like like Chamari Atapattu in terms of opening the batting and bowling off spin. So I genuinely thought Mumbai would go for her, especially because, you know, she's a left-hander. She's done it in Sri Lankan conditions, which is very similar to how Mumbai would be, the wickets in Mumbai would be. So that was a big, big miss. The other big misses that I particularly um, spent some time thinking about are, of course, the larger chunk of the associate nation representatives. Only one associate nation player got picked and that was Tara Norris from the U- United States of America. What explains uh, the fact that Mahika Gore, whose name did come up at the auction, and the Gujarat Giants had uh, had showed interest in bidding for her, for the UAE lanky, tall, fast bowler who impressed at the Asia Cup and some of the recent matches that she, that she played and at Fairbrick Invitational as well. But unfortunately, Mahika could not eventually get a bit because funnily enough, or well, not so funnily enough for Mahika, Gujarat had uh, ex- exhausted their overseas yeah, okay. player purse or the number of overseas players that could that can be part uh, of, of a squad. How <laughs> debilitating could that be to the confidence of a young player because she's only a teenager? But looks like if given the opportunity that or the opportunities that players from full members might get, she could go on to become one of the best pace bowlers because she has that pace, she has that movement, the height, she has so much going for her. Is it a case of Mahika Kaur being mm-hmm. robbed an opportunity to rub shoulders at one of the most important uh, tournaments, which is 
which is based, which is hinged on the premise of equality, giving opportunities, yeah. right? So, uh, what did you make of uh, the unfortunate uh, incident that happened around <laughs> Mahika Gore of the United uh, Arab Emirates? I mean, it was really, really heartbreaking for someone who was 15 or 16 years of age to have that. And, you know, when Gujarat Giants actually showed a lot of interest in roping her, I was personally very happy because I've seen her in the Asia Cup. We've seen her, you know, perform a lot for UAE. And left-arm seamers are obviously a rare talent in women's cricket. So for her to actually have an opportunity to be a part of some uh, the WPL is something really, really massive. But... Uh, I really hope that it doesn't affect her uh, confidence because it can take it can actually take a toll on you when you know you're very close to getting you know up picked for an auction. All I probably feel is that she should take it in a positive way in understanding that okay, and at least a franchise wanted to you know uh, pick me up. And uh, I mean, it's very easy for us to sit here and say, but for the person who is actually going through that, it probably must be very very heartbreaking and. She'll take a couple of days to recover from it for sure. But I hope she comes back stronger because she is one of the talents to watch out for in the future. And uh, I'm sure in the coming season or the coming editions of the WPL, we will see a lot of her. I was actually very surprised to not have Isha Oza also in the uh, you know auction list because she was one of the highest leading run scorers in the last uh, calendar year. So for her also not to be in the auction was something really surprising. It also actually... Uh, makes us understand that because there is a lot of because there is not much of data available i've you know we've heard all the teams saying that we don't have a lot of data surrounding domestic players or you know women's players apart from the prominent names or the prominent teams uh would be a little disappointing because uh, there is there are a lot of people who actually follow women's cricket a lot especially you know the domestic cricket and the associate nation to have the right kind of advice i i was pretty i was actually not sure how they planned out the auction because most of the players which we felt deserved to get picked were not actually so that is something that is really really surprising and it's a big miss as far as wpl is concerned now that we have sort of taken a look at uh, the big buys and the big misses let us go back to the one and last franchise that needs talking about and that is the team with a Z at the end, UP Warriors, mm -hmm. most likely going to be led by somebody who hails from UP but plays mm -hmm. a domestic cricket for Bengal. Deepti Sharma is obviously the big, big name UP Warriors have picked up and I think the way their squad has uh, has taken shape, it could it could lead to uh, at least a, a top uh, top two. Who knows? They could be one of the finalists because yeah. I have a feeling they yeah. have a very well balanced squad. Second to only probably Royal Challengers Bangalore because Royal Challengers Bangalore too have picked up a few players at base price and some of uh, them are hard. Mm. Are, are captains of their side. They have Dane Van Nekal, They have uh, Heather Knight. Um, of course, they have uh, Smriti Mandana and Ellis Free as well, but uh, it remains to be seen what are they going to do with so many captains. But uh, mm -hmm. the pick they made of Dane Van Nekal was also quite, in quite interesting given yeah. everything that has happened around Dane Van Nekal uh, in the lead up to this World Cup, in the lead up to the WPL auction. So, for the franchises to have reposed their faith in something like a Dane Van Nekal, that speaks volumes about the profile that. Vanyaka carries uh, in international cricket. It's really not just about those 18 ounce odd seconds that uh, yeah. literally kicked her out of uh, out of the squad uh, that Cricket South Africa put out that fielded uh, for the T20 World Cup. And in a way, uh, South Africa also got off to a rocky start uh, at the at the World Cup. And there was a bit of chatter on social media whether yeah. somebody like a Dani Vanyaka could have been that all rounder, could have been that batter who could have salvaged that uh, that defeat they faced in their opening game against Sri Lanka. But going back to UP Warriors, uh, let us talk about the big names there, starting with Deepti Sharma, who is what, likely to be the player of the World Cup or are we jinxing her? 
I think so, and uh, she's probably she's most likely to also lead the franchise. So they did go all out for her. I think the cl- strategy plan for UP was fairly simple: just stack your team with a number of all rounders, and that's what they have done basically. You know, you have Dipti Sharma, you have Talia Mikra, probably you have Devika White. There are three of them: Sophie Eccleston. So it's just high quality players, and they were also a bit lucky in terms of getting most of these players at a pretty cheap rate, if I can say that. Because I expected someone like a Grace Harris to actually go for say around one point two, one point five crores, but for having her at around seventy, seventy five lakhs is a big plus for UP. Also, they have Alisa Healy, so there is a lot of experience in that batting unit. and uh, you add on to the under 19 talent of shweta serawat and probably a parshvi chopra so there is a lot of talent and up is one of the teams to watch out for because for me up and rcb are the only two sides who have a well rounded unit you know they have probably most of their bases covered as far as up is concerned they have their most bases covered because you have a high quality left arm spinner in sophie eccleston she's the number one t20 bowler to complement that you have rajeshwari kaikwad you have a left arm pacer in anjali sarwani dipti sharma obviously we know what skills she brings to the table and a left spin option of devika vai there so their bowling unit looks pretty sorted as far as you know the variety and skill set is concerned so up will definitely be a team to watch out for as far as i think rcb is concerned Uh, they've always known to have like a st- they, the uh, the strategy plan for them usually has been to have like a uh, three four star studded players and i was really really happy when they got renuka thakur renuka singh and megan shoot uh please opposition batters just watch out for your toenails there are in swingers coming every six second delivery i mean they're two most destructive bowlers in the power play and to have them along with richa ghosh as their finisher uh, just makes this unit a lot more formidable and they also have a left arm spinner in sahana pawar she's a young spinner from karnataka and she's done a lot of you know she's impressed with her t20 performances in the domestic circuit so for her to actually get that opportunity to rub shoulders with these domestic stars is something that will do indian cricket a world of good and some of the domestic cricketers i am looking forward to watching alongside uh, shahana of course is dhara gujjar uh, from bengal mm-hmm. the left hand top order batter whom i happen to have played a district level tournament with when she was probably only 16 or 17 and she was my opening partner i sucked at uh, strike mm-hmm. rotation it turned out but then she was looking as uh, disciplined as uh, obedient uh, at least going by how she was she wore specs at the time uh, mm-hmm. so the player i'm talking about is smriti mandana left hand opening batter top order batter and i wasn't surprised that it was the julian goswami led julian yeah. goswami being part of the mumbai indians uh, coaching uh, and support staff picked dhara gujjar because dear viewers watch out for dhara gujjar she will play for india one day not yeah. because i have played with her or she hails from bengal mm-hmm. but she has a is a genuinely uh, good good talent she was made to change from bowling pace to spin just so that she can focus more on her batting uh, but here is a player who can actually be a yeah. very smriti mandana like figure if given uh, given the opportunities and uh, i do see her starting really with uh, in that harmanpreet kaur yeah. led side dhara gujjar yeah. is a place play, player to watch out for the other very impressive buys that uh, i spotted also again came from the royal challengers bangalore especially Disha Kasat. I may not be getting the pronunciation of her uh, last name right. So Disha Kasat or Disha Kasat, the all-rounder from uh, Vidarbha, if I'm not mistaken. She brings mm-hmm. a lot, lot to the table and uh, probably uh, could get uh, get a look into the uh, starting eleven ahead of some of the more fancied names. So yeah. let's let's see how that goes because Disha Kasat could go on to having a, yeah. a breakout tournament and will. Mm-hmm. probably thrust herself uh, into national reckoning uh, through the through the wpl because india doesn't have uh, a lot of all rounders who can be that match winner with the bat yes they have uh, deepthi sharma but their primary skills somewhat still rely on bowling so disha yeah. kas could be could be that player uh, but yeah we'll we'll take a look at all of that in the coming weeks but a lot of excitement did emerge from that option 
which has kind of uh, made us forget to some extent the other tournament that is taking place and it would be absolutely criminal especially me being here in south africa in port elizabeth if we do not talk about the icc t20 world cup india are taking on west indies in their second match of the world cup having defeated pakistan in uh, in a thriller if i may put it that way after bisma maroof and aishan asim's terrific 81 run out partnership went in vain Thanks to Jimima Rodriguez, somebody mm -hmm. Shweta Harahari knows very well. Mm -hmm. uh, they were neighbors, no, they were not neighbors, but they knew mm -hmm. each other very well. Having they were roommates. <laughs> Sorry? They were roommates for a very long time. <laughs> there you go. I've told you, right? Shweta knows her very well. But uh, yeah, I think there is a genuine uh, sense of positivity around the way Jimima Rodriguez performed. What did you make of that performance uh, that India? needed from Jamima and she delivered under under quite some pressure having not been in, in yeah. fine form uh, leading into the tournament. I mean, uh, there is no point. I mean, uh, it is obvious that she was under a lot of pressure when, you know, the World Cup, uh, we were nearing the World Cup because she didn't have a great run in the Tri-Series. And, you know, she, she performed really well in the Asia Cup, but she didn't have a great series against Australia at home in Mumbai. And a lot was expected out of her. With Smriti Mandana also not featuring in the playing 11, there was added responsibility on Jemima and Harman Fried to actually, you know, shoulder the bulk of the responsibility with the side. And for her to come out and anchor that run chase to an absolute perfection is something she's done it time and again for Mumbai opening the batting and in crunch situation she is one of the players that any captain would bank on I would definitely bank on her when I was actually leading for Mumbai because she's one of the players who uh, thrives under pressure and we've seen that time and again for her to actually do that at the biggest stage and India I mean Pakistan were definitely bolstered by the partnership of uh, Bisma Maruf and Aisha Nazim and for them to actually come out and start playing and attacking and positive brand of cricket is something that we probably will see a lot more in the coming matches especially against West Indies England because they are used to and they like the style of play of taking the attack to the opposition bowlers they did have to be a bit circumspect because Spriti Mandana was not available for them. But for Jemima and Richa goes to actually finish things off for the Indian side, it just goes on to show the confidence they have in this young team. And I think with the performance like this, India is definitely one of the favourites to actually reach the finals. That's a big statement made by Ishwada mm. Haranhali. And you heard it here first, dear mm. viewers. Yes. India, mm. as we mentioned earlier, play... West Indies uh, in their next fixture, how that pans out and what might be the big takeaways from that game and the rest of India's group games. Remember, they are now playing in Cape Town, but they will move to Port Elizabeth to play their last two group games before should they go on to make the quarterfinals, which Shweta is convinced they, mm. I beg your pardon, should they go on to make the semifinals, which Shweta is convinced they will, they will return to Cape Town, whether that happens or not. and how the big windfall, the big payday that they had, that they landed at the Women's Premier League auction, goes on to have an imprint, if at all, on the performances mm -hmm. of the players. Uh, will they be energized more than ever? That remains to be seen. And we'll uh, take a look at all of that and dissect in the coming days and weeks here on Cricket.com's What's Up with Women's Cricket.